Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I have a video for you where I'm gonna be talking about basically the diagram you see on the screen. Um, how can I process data from a bunch of different real-time stock data streams, process it via Kafka and some other tools um, before loading it that transform data into a Cassandra database and then up updating a model to rerun some predictions so that I can predict the latest stock price for that ticker. Um, so while I'm not going to give you my transformative world-winning stock formula today, I am going to show you how you can build the data framework behind it. So I'm going to show you how you can use Kafka to consume stock data in real time. So every time a new piece of stock data is produced, you consume that, do some data processing on it before storing that data into a Cassandra database, which is a really good distributed database for large volumes of data, uh, especially if you're doing parallel processing on that data. Um, and also, then triggering a model to rerun with that newest data with the aim of giving you the latest uh, stock market prediction so that you can make lots of money. Uh, so if you enjoy these videos, please like and subscribe. It helps me out a ton. But without further ado, let's get into it. So the first thing we're gonna do is go into good old VS Code uh, and get started setting up our environment. So just gonna create a new folder, call it, uh, let's see, stock market top Kafka and then CD into Stock Market Kafka. And awesome. So now that we have our folder set up, what we're gonna do is go into uh, our actual folder where this is and start open, creating some files. So there will be three different files we're going to need to create. We're gonna need our Kafka producer, our Kafka stream processor, which is actually gonna do that data processing. Uh, and then we have our Kafka consumer, which is going to be then using that data for a model retraining cycle. Or, or, and it's also going to be saving that data within that Cassandra database I mentioned. Um, so first what we're gonna do is build our Kafka consumer file. Um, and so here, this will be where you would just pull from any uh, data file that you, or any data source that you're trying to pull stock market data from. So we'll call this Kafka producer.py. And then what we'll do here is just simulate some real-time stock prices and push them into a Kafka topic. Not a lot of free APIs, unfortunately, um, that will give you the real-time uh, stock data at the velocity I'm looking for to simulate here. Um, so we're just gonna use this to, to do that. Uh, also, if you don't have Kafka installed, follow my video on how to set up Kafka on a local environment. Um, but within this, what we're going to do is basically just have our Kafka producer. Um, so this is the Kafka producer object that's going to create a local Kafka node on this Kafka localhost 9092 port. Uh, and then we're going to also set a topic name of stock prices. We're also importing here JSON, um, time, and random. So JSON is for handling JSON data. Time is for setting date time, manipulating date time, um, and import random just for determining random values. Um, and so really this is just kind of a catch-all random per, uh, file that I, or random data predict or producing file that I like to use for these kind of situations um, because it's just really easy to run on your local machine and control how often that data is getting pulled and pushed without running into API limits. Um, so here I'm just creating a very simple return stock data function where it's going to generate a symbol um, of either Apple, Google, Tesla, or Microsoft, the random timestamp, um, and then it's, or the, whatever the current timestamp is, then a random price between open, high, low, close, volume, et cetera. Um, so then we're also going to define a Kafka producer object. So this is actually defining that Kafka node that's going to be producing this data and then saying while well, true. So while this Kafka node is up and running, this is going to run that stock data, then sleep for a second, uh, or create the stock data. So calling the stock data function, sending that to this topic from the producer and then printing, hey, this produced stock data. So just we have it a record in our logs before sleeping again. Um, so now every second, this will produce a new random stock ticker piece of information. So a really easy simulation tool. So now that we've got our producer all set up, it is time to now start building our consumer and our stream processor. So here we're going to build a processor Kafka.py. Um, and so within this processor, what we're going to do is connect it to that, str that stream producer we just made. So here at the top, we're going to import both Kafka consumer and Kafka producer. Um, and then we're going to set a few different uh, variables. So our Kafka broker is our, you know, kind of central point for managing Kafka connections. Again, localhost 9092. We have our source topic, stock prices. So the place where we're gonna be pulling this data from. And then we also have our clean topic. So we're gonna be pushing our clean stock prices to after it's been complete. Still within the same uh, Kafka environment, but 
isolated into different Kaf Kafka topics, which essentially act as partitions within Kafka. Then we're going to create our Kafka consumer. So setting a source topic, which is stock prices, uh, setting our Kafka broker, and then also setting our value to serialization. So this is just a way for decoding um, from a JSON file, the different values, so the stock prices that were being produced and sent in JSON format. Then similarly, we're going to define our producer. So again, using that Kafka broker and setting that value of ser serializer as well for our JSON messages. Then what we're going to do is just do some basic data cleaning. Um, so here we're going to remove any outliers and ensure valid price relationships. Um, so this is also where you would add any other kind of custom conditions you want to have set, any kind of cleaning operations where any data points that don't fulfill all of these uh, parameters are going to be dropped. So this is your method of cleaning your data, making sure that only solid good data makes it into your stock, uh, you know, stock price model simulator to make sure you get the best predictions. Then what we're going to do is just, after we've created our function for cleaning it, we're just going to create the mechanism for actually going through each of those messages from our consumer uh, and saying, hey, for each of these uh, clean data, you know, each of these pieces of data, we're going to take this stock data, run it through our processor, uh, our clean data method here, and then we're going to send it into our clean data topic. Um, so this is this message.value is capturing the message that we're taking from this Kafka consumer. Um, and this is then stored in stock data and then sent after it's in, after it's been cleaned by the clean data function and then sent to the uh, processor or to the clean data topic. Uh, so now that we have our clean data ready for machine learning and, and any and for storage in Cassandra, we'll then create our last Kafka file. So here, this is our model updater and storage.py. And so here, what we're going to do is, so now this final Kafka script is going to consume that clean stock data, use it to make a real-time price prediction, uh, where do we think the price is going, and then store the data within Cassandra and PostgreSQL. Um, so just giving you two options in case you aren't ready for the heavyweightness of Cassandra. Um, and so here, what we're gonna do is import Kafka consumer, Kafka producer, JSON for our JSON data, NumPy, so this is just a really easy way to handle uh, arrays and, and just kind of a natural pairing to pandas as well. Um, we also have job lib, um, and this is just allowing us to set different jobs. Um, and SciCob G2, this is a machine learning package for running some machine learning operations in Python. Um, and then we also have our Cassandra cluster object. So this is an object that's going to uh, just allow us to connect with our Cassandra cluster and then store our data within there. And so I just realized I misspoke. This is for connecting to Py for PostgreSQL. This is actually what we're using for running Python uh, pipelines um, for machine learning. So sorry for the confusion there. Um, but anyways, next thing we're gonna do is set some of the different Kafka configurations that we have been setting previously. So here, Kafka local is 9092, clean topic, prediction topic as well. Um, and then, so this is gonna be obviously where we're storing our predictions. And so then what we're gonna do is load a machine learning model. So this is assuming you have a machine learning model uh, already built. Um, so you know this is where import, use whatever kind of machine learning model you would wanna use. The general format still applies. Um, in this case, using childlib, loading a model from you know, stock, mar stock model .pkl. Uh, And then here, what we're going to do is we're gonna you know, import using scikit-learn, uh, the random forest classifier. So it's just classic random connection uh, detector for relationships between entities. Um, then we're going to use this to fit a model onto our uh, data that's being, produ being produced from this Kafka topic, assuming the model has already been uh, pre-trained. Um, and so this is just indicating dummy data here, but this is where you'd feed in your actual data, do your actual model training. Just wanna show you kind of the format around it because obviously I'm not gonna make a killer uh, stock market prediction model or I'd already already retired. Um, and then next step is initializing our Kafka consumers and producers again. So using the same clean topic, uh, to link them, bootstrap servers using our localhost 9092 to reference where Kafka is running. Um, and then what we'll also do is initiate a Postgres and SQL connection, uh, and sorry, Postgres and Cassandra connection here. So here we have our Postgres connection where we're just connecting with DB name, username, and password, um, and then creating a cursor connection there. Similarly, we're also creating a connection to a Cassandra cluster that's running on our local host. And I'll show you what this Docker image looks like in a second. Initiating that connection and then setting a key space. So for the key value pairing of our stock data, it's going to set a key space within Cassandra of stock data um, to segment it out. Then once we've set up all of our different connection details, our next step 
is going to be pr to prepare some features. So here we're going to convert that stock data from just a you know random JSON into a feature vector. So here we have stock data open, high, stock data low, close, and volume. Um, and then what this is going to do is then go through our stock data, break it out into its individual features. And then what we're going to do is for each new message that's produced in the consumer topic, so coming from our clean data topic, we're then going to take that data, so message.value gets referenced into a stock data. Then we're going to add that to an array, so preparing the features, reshaping it, so all the different features are broken out, the different predictive values. Then we're going to send this information to a Kafka predictions topic, print out the predicted value, uh, and then store whatever the prediction is either in PostgreSQL or in Cassandra. Doesn't really matter which one you want to use. I uh, just want to show both options for either, hey, small use case or really big production use case. Um, and then we just have a print function here to print whatever data was stored in Cassandra. Um, so that's the setup on the Kafka side of things. If you want to use Cassandra as well, um, you can also set a, you're going to need to create a Docker compose file here. So Cassandra compose.yaml. Um, and then here, just basically copy in this information. So the Cassandra image publicly available. Um, and this will, if you, when you run this compose file, I'll show you in a second, this will spin up a local Cassandra environment. Um, and then similarly, once you've started Cassandra, you're gonna then need to run a Cassandra SQL command to set up the database. So you have those database tables available that I was referencing there. Um, so db setup cas.sql. And so here, just run these commands within your SQL database, create key space if not exists with replication, um, and then creating that table with all the same different predictive values that <clears throat> we were using within that, uh, those scripts we just were developing. Um, so then to start running these all on your local machine, uh, if you don't, aren't worried about doing this in production, <clears throat> all you need to do um, <clears throat> is, number one, you know, have a Kafka environment running, but then just run Python, Kafka producer, uh, Kafka processor. So each of these different models, we're just going, you know, you'd run, you'd start up. So model update or Kafka producer here. So Kafka producer, run this. Um, and then this is gonna script because I don't have my environment hooked up to my command line. Uh, but basically we just start all these up um, and then while they're up and running until they're stopped, it's going to be processing any data. Um, and in this case, it's going to be producing data every second. So you can start watching the flow data through your Kafka broker um, between the producer and consumer getting transformed and that model updating. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video. You know, I know it's a lot of theoretical, but it's important to understand the theoretical before you get in the physical. Um, I hope you've had a great time watching this. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.